Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brain Bean here again, back with another keyboard review for you. Today we're taking a look at the Alferior Keys AKTKL keyboard. So with that, let's get into it. So Alfieri Keys actually sells two different keyboards on their website. They have the Hayabusa, which is their 60% keyboard, and then they have the AKTKL, which is their, as the name would imply, their 10 keyless keyboard. Now it is important to mention that both of these keyboards are OEM'd. The 60% is made by Miller, and this one here is made by Saidu. Now Alfieri Keys is the only retailer in the US that sells this keyboard, which is the CD702S from Saidu. But you can get this keyboard on AliExpress for about 72 bucks. Now that's important because the asking price for this keyboard, depending on whether or not it's on sale, is generally somewhere around 120 to 125 bucks. So where does the cost and all that come from? I'm gonna do a quick breakdown of that now, but we're gonna dive more into it and I think it will make a little bit more sense and then we can try to figure out if it's actually worth the money or not. So uh, this keyboard, like I said, retails for about 72 bucks for the base version of the keyboard. Now, Alfieri Keys version does come with flare tech switches, which go for about maybe 50 bucks for a 110 pack. And then you also get the set of keycaps, which for an 87 key set from Alfieri Keys is about $45. So when you kind of throw all that together, it does kind of start to make a little bit more sense where the price is coming from. But let's look at the actual overall build quality of the keyboard. So the keyboard consists of a metal top plate here that's mounted over a plastic casing. And the keyboard actually has some pretty good heft to it. Surprisingly, for a Chinese OEM keyboard, it's pretty sturdy, feels pretty solidly built. I do like on this particular keyboard that they made a really good use of all the space. For example, uh, the keyboard's no bigger than it has to be. All of the bezels here are very minimal, very small, and I like that they have this sort of curve that comes off to the side of them. They sort of taper down, which looks really nice. And if we look over here above the arrow cluster, you've actually got some dedicated controls here too with a dedicated Windows lock key, a dedicated button to change the volume scroll wheel here from volume, or you can also click it and change it to control the brightness on the keyboard which I think it's just cool that they were able to add integrated controls over the arrow cluster, which traditionally very often is just void space on a keyboard. And so to keep that footprint small, they kind of rearrange some stuff. You also have your LED indicators here right next to the escape key, which again is a good use of the space. We flip the keyboard over to the underside. We've got four small rubberized pads, but good enough, as well as two rubberized extendable legs. Nothing else really to speak of on the underside, pretty standard fare here. Well, when we look at the removable cable here on the back, we do have a little notch cut out to accommodate for this uh, included braided USB-C cable. Now, my initial concern was that because it has this sort of square shaped cutout for the actual connector, you have to kind of slide it into the casing. And I thought this could make getting cables after the fact in future kind of a pain in the butt if they don't fit. And actually, Alfieri Key started offering uh, coiled cables recently and I thought, well, that would be really stupid if it didn't fit. But then when I tested it with my cables that I've gotten from Lux Cables as well as Alferior's, it actually, they all fit just fine. So I think they were able to make the space wide enough that it should fit most cables. But again, that's most cables. We also have an included uh, USB pass-through here. And I do kind of like that it's illuminated blue, which is kind of neat. I guess if it's dark or, or underlit area, you can still see it. But uh, other than that, it's just kind of a cool little addition. This brings us to one of the coolest features and also one of the most disappointing features of this keyboard. The AKTKL is a hot swappable keyboard, which I always like to see. I think it's great, especially for newer people to keyboards to be able to swap out their switches and try out stuff that's different. However, the PCB on this keyboard does not support most traditional style switches. Instead, it's built to work with prism style switches like flare tech switches, where it has the built-in IR projector and the photo receiver to where it will shoot the light up into the switches, basically for use with optical switches. So that's basically what this keyboard comes with is you can get it with either flare tech red switches or flare tech blue switches, uh, which is gonna be the linear variation or the clicky variant. Now these switches are rated to last 100 million clicks. 
they have a actuation point of two millimeters, a total travel of four millimeters, and they're both rated to be around 55 grams actuation force, although the red switches in particular, the linear ones I found to be a lot lighter, maybe around 45. Overall switch feel on these is actually pretty good. Uh, if you've used the Wooting One keyboard, have you seen that, these similar switches um, into that, although they do not have the dynamic actuation point that the Wooting One has, and it's very important to keep that in mind. So you can hot swap this keyboard with different types of flare tech style prism switches, but you cannot use cherry switches, Gateron switches, anything that uses the traditional two prong mechanical switch type that would actually plug into the PCB. This does not support that, so keep that in mind. The stabilizers on the AKTKL are your traditional cherry style plate mounted stabilizers. They are pretty rattly, although because this is a hot swappable keyboard, very, very simple to just do a quick Band-Aid mod and lube these up. I do have a video on how to do that. I'll link that down below if you guys wanna check that out. But just so you guys can hear, here is a quick sound test of the AKTKL with the FlareTech red switches. Now quickly looking at what the keyboard comes with, like I said, you get the braided USB-C cable included with that. You do get just a simple plastic uh, switch and keycap puller hybrid. Although one thing to, to mention is that the hot swappable sockets on this actually are very easy to pop in and out of the switches. Sometimes I feel like switches don't fit super well and it's really hard to pop them in and out. But this one actually does a really good job of that. There's also very little wobble, so it holds the switch as well. Also, I'm not trying to say that they just pop out easily, um, which is always nice. You also get three included extra flare tech switches of your chosen type just to swap out if something goes wrong or you, you, know, you wanna pop out or you lose one or something. And lastly, the keyboard does use a companion software to control the lighting. You will have to go to Saidu's website to download this. And to say that the software is underwhelming would be an overstatement because there's really a, not a whole lot you can do with it. Uh, it does include 18 different preset lighting modes that you can configure, as well as just the basics of sort of remapping the keys and creating macros. You can save up to three profiles into the software, but I just found the whole experience to be kind of underwhelming and a little bit clunky. Arguably one of the coolest things about this keyboard is the keycaps. And with Alfieri Keys primarily being a keycap manufacturer, yeah, I would, I would hope that would be the case. Now, the version that you see here, they actually built me a custom keycap colorway that I designed, uh, just kind of going with my sort of channels aesthetics of gray, white, and purple. But traditionally, this keyboard is available with about eight or so of their more popular colorways. Now, of course, you can go out and buy other ones, but I think the main value add here is that you get the keyboard with a nice set of their PVT double shot keycaps. Now, I do think Alfieri Keys keycaps themselves are quite nice. They've got a nice texture to them, and I think they offer colorways that are atypical to what's out there in a lot of other sets. I like that they have sort of the little stripes that run through here, and they usually have about three colors per colorway, which is more than the traditional one or two colors that you see in most mass-produced sets, which I think is pretty cool. The font is clear and simple, and the lighting shines through and permeates the translucent parts of the keycaps really nice and very, very full. So where does that leave us guys? For 125 bucks for this keyboard, honestly, I found myself really conflicted over doing this review. I kind of went back and forth between the overall value versus my personal experience. And I think, like I said, again, for 75 bucks on AliExpress for the base keyboard, plus 50 bucks for a 110 pack of FlareTech switches, plus the 45 bucks for the actual keycaps, it's not a bad deal, because if you were to buy all of this separately, you're gonna be paying about 50 bucks more than you would if you bought it like this. But if you consider buying it all separately like that and paying the extra 50 bucks, you could really get something like the GMMK, which is gonna be a modular 10 keyless keyboard that's gonna support a lot more switch types. And I would say the quality on that keyboard is a little bit better than this one. I think it's gonna give you an overall better experience. And you can still go out and purchase a set of Alfieri Keys keycaps and throw that on that keyboard, which I would recommend 
the, taking a look at the keycaps. But for me, I think at this price point, guys, honestly, it's just hard to recommend this one the way it is. And there might be a few instances where it would be good for you to check it out and go with it. But I think unless you just really want the flare tech switches and you don't plan on hot swapping them, which ultimately kills that feature for me, if you're not gonna swap it out with different switches, then I would probably just go with something else like the GMMK, like I mentioned. But anyways, guys, that's it for this one. Just wanted to do a quick review of it so you know what's out there. If you do wanna check out anything from Alferior Keys, if you use coupon code BRAINBEAN, you will get 10% off on anything that you purchase there. Of course, you can give this video a like if you enjoyed it to show your support. And if you're new here on the channel, I'd love to see you subscribe. So I've got a lot more videos coming for you in the near future. But as always, guys, stay safe out there. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.